What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan and it is finally December, which only means one thing, Christmas time. And to celebrate that, I've gotten so many DMs about the Luckbox card protectors and how that they sold out so quickly. So here we are, the green Christmas edition. Oh God, I dropped it. Oh no. Here we go. The green Christmas edition Luckbox card protectors are here and they are available now on the site, rampagepokerstore.com. There's a limited supply, and uh, I'm so happy to finally launch this. It's green, it's Christmas, and it wouldn't be Christmas without a splash of red. Finally, just restocked these for a small quantity as well. There's not a ton available of these red ones because, well, I already released the first one and a lot of people like those, but, but because it sold out in literally less than a week, it was so quick and I got flooded with so many messages about bringing this back. So for the people who want it back, here we go, these red ones. So now we have two Luckbox Edition card protectors, the red and green. If you wanna help support the channel, it is always much appreciated. So thank you so much for the support. Hopefully you guys have a happy holidays and I'm so excited to launch these December videos because they're all going to be bangers. So thanks so much and let's get into the video. What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another very busy night here at The Win. And uh, today we're not gonna play the 2-5, we're gonna play the 5-10. It's uncapped, a new game just opened up and we're gonna be in for five? Ten? I'm not sure, but uh, on the side here, we also entered this like ring tournament, a ring event, and we're actually, you know, not running that bad. So we're gonna try to multitask. It's gonna be one of those people who are gonna play a tournament, online tournament on the side, but uh, yeah, we're playing this. We're gonna see if we can win, win a ring while playing 510 cash, that'd be cool, but uh, gonna focus on the 510 cash game, then this, but let's hop in there. Try to run it up, man. We are in the 510 game with 10,000 in our stack and one of the first hands with ace 10 offsuit. We're in the cutoff and we're playing six handed here so far. I raise it up to $30 and get the big blind to defend. Off to a flop of king 10 six rainbow. He checks to me and with middle pair top kicker, definitely a board I'd like to favor betting with. So I size to $40 for value and he decides on making the call. The turn comes a pretty good looking one in the 10 of clubs, brings in two clubs on board and we've improved to trips obviously, and even better news, he decides to lead out for $90. It is absolutely a good card for me and also a good one for the big blind to lead on. And I think well studied and balanced players will do this for bluffs and value. And when we're facing this $90 bets, I think us raising here doesn't make too much sense as the only hands that we're repping will be a 10 and having exactly that I decide on just making the call and under rep our hand a little bit we're off to see a river. The river comes the nine of clubs not the best card as the flush draw and straight draws can get there. He barrels again for $260 pretty large sizing and I'm thinking either raising or calling in the spot. Obviously, we're just never going to be folding trips unless we're a maniac. And I'm thinking if I raise here, what worse hands can call? Pretty much just hands like Queen 10 or Jack 10. And it seems super thin. So although we just have a really good hand, I think calling a big bet just makes sense. So tossing the chip, expecting to win this one a lot of the time. And whew, good thing that we didn't raise because he shows us Queen 3 of clubs and he has a flush, so he's gonna take this one. I guess I'm a little happy about controlling the size of this pot, although we lose, still maybe the minimum. Following hand, picking up ace seven off suit. We're in the big blind, playing five handed, and the button raises to 30. Small blind folds and ace seven off. Gonna be a good hand to just defend and play, so I make the call for a good price, and we're going to a flop of deuce, four, six, two diamonds. A board that's going to whiff me a lot of the time and whiff him a lot of the time too. Action goes check, check. The turn comes the three of diamonds now. And considering that we have picked up some straight draw outs and some flush draw outs, I bet out $50. And to our surprise, he now puts in a raise to 230 Look, we've got the ace of diamonds and a gutter to the best straight. This is a pretty easy call for 180 more. But I think it's really hard to put them on some value hands when they check the flop, especially flushes. So at the very best, I think this player has a five for a straight, maybe some two pair holdings, but they don't make a whole lot of sense. Anyways, I'm confused at the development of this hand so far, but I make the call and we're off to see a river. 
The river comes a seven. This just doesn't change a single thing. Although we do have a pair, I continue with a check. And now he puts out a huge overbet. He sizes to $700 here. And well, I think about this spot for a while. This overbet can be super strong. Could mean some straights, maybe some small flushes in there. But we know something that he doesn't have. And that is going to be the nut flush as we block it. This board texture is in such a way where I think it's better for me than this button player and screw it. Let's apply pressure and go for it. Pretty ambitious, but I put in a check raise to $2,300. Same sizing that I would do with a lot of strong hands like ace high flushes. And facing this bet, he doesn't look pretty happy about this and thinks for a while. And it looks like he's in a terrible spot, which at least we made him really agonize about. And ultimately, he does make the call. That sucks. We show our nothing holding. And he shows the jack seven of diamonds. So really couldn't pitch him off a flush here. Makes a good call and just got to hand it to him. Props to him for taking this one down. In the following spot, picking up jack 10 of spades in the small blind, the button opens it up to $40. And having just lost that hand, I'm in a mood to put more money in the middle. And with a good candidate to do so, I three bet to 160. This player makes the call. So we're going to see a flop out of position, which comes ace, jack, five, two hearts. Here with middle pair and an ace high board, I decided to check this one. And he bets out 200, which seems ridiculously large. Feeling a little fishy about this sizing, you know, I'm stuck, gotta make some money back. I toss in 200 bucks to see a turn. Turn comes the queen of spades, another card over our pair, so that sucks. Action goes check check though, and when the river comes a board pairing five, I'm gonna check it over to him, praying he doesn't bet this one, and luckily he doesn't. Checks it back, we show our pair of jacks, and to our surprise, we win. Definitely could have been in a horribly uncomfortable spot if he bet river, I'm just glad it didn't come to that. In the following hand, picking up king queen of diamonds in the small blind, there is an early position limp and onto this button player who has a massive stack, covers the table by a ton. He raises to $40. The small blind makes the call next to act and we're in the big blind here with a really great hand and a good spot to squeeze. I size up to a three bet of $200, applying pressure against all of these players here and no pressure to be had. The button and small blind make the call. So we're going three ways and the flop comes pretty nice for us in king eight four two spades. Nice looking flop with top pair decent kicker. I bet out 230 to start. The button now thinks about it and ends up making the call. And now onto the small blind player to close out this action on the flop and nah, he's gonna go reopen it. He thinks 230 is not enough and check raises to $830. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my mind right now. It seems like he's only repping hands like eights or fours for value, and the rest are pretty much going to be draws. So not repping that many hands, we have a pretty strong one ourselves. We make the call and the button decides on a fold. So we're gonna go to a bloated pot, but at least we're in position. The turn comes the queen of hearts, and there's that. Now that closes the door on any sort of folding that we thought about on the flop. Two flushers out there, and he bets out $1,530. Pretty weird sizing, as he only leaves himself with like seven to $800 behind, and he could have easily just ripped it all in, but whatever. Pretty easy to play our hand now with top two pair. Just not gonna go anywhere. I rip it all in. On. And no one's really surprised as he makes the call. Going to a river, which is the six of clubs, so all the flush draws bricked out, which is nice. I show top two pair and wow, he sounds unhappy about it and somehow sounds like we sucked out on him, but he ends up mucking and I'm pretty unsure about what holdings he could have had, but we scoop this one and it's nice to rebound from our failed bluff attempt. The only hands that he could be super upset about that we beat would maybe be ace king or king eight, but who knows whether we sucked out or had the best hand the whole time, but still, we rebound and win a sizable pot and get it pushed our way. Since the first king queen suited went so well, we pick it up again in the hijack. I raise to 30, get the big blind to call. And we're going to a flop of ace, nine, eight, two spades. Flopping the flush draw here, I bet out $40. 
and now this player check raises to 170. This is the same player that we tried to bluff off in one of the previous hands. Seems pretty aggressive, and we've got the nut flush draw. Not going to go anywhere, I call. The turn comes a 7. Pretty not ideal card as we didn't hit. He bets bigger now to $300, and facing this larger sizing, I think I can certainly start folding these hands as the board favors him and the sizing is pretty big but we're still drawing to the nuts here and can potentially make a boatload of money if we hit. Folding is boring, I call, you know the drill. The river comes a five of diamonds. Damn it, he checks now and it seems pretty ambitious to try to bluff him off of an ace or some sort of two pair holding that can be playing this way. So not going to take the bait. I check back, give this up and he shows us the ace nine of hearts. Gotta give credit where credit's due. He's just got the hand every single time we play against them, but he'll take the pot and we'll ship it his way. All right, so we've been winning hands, losing some hands, and this one with ace queen of spades in the straddle. There's a button open to $50 and the small blinds three bets to 200. On to me now and facing an open from late position then the three bets, I really don't like calling here and we absolutely have a great hand to four bet with. So I put in yet another raise to $500. The button who committed $50 gets out of the way pretty quickly and onto the small blind player. This is the same guy who covers the entire table. He's got like 20K in stack and we're just playing for our little measly stack. And yeah, $500 is not gonna scare him. He just puts in a five bet to $1,500. Yep, this sucks. Our hand plays pretty well, but I think against five bets, this is just a little too weak. So I'm pretty much just done with this hand. I think this guy's pretty strong and definitely can do this with some bluffs, I guess. But for the majority of the field, these five bets are going to be super strong and bluffs seem rare. So I just let my cards go. Can certainly be dominated by hands like Kings or Ace King or even Aces himself. So there it is. We let it go and lose and torch $500. Finally, 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 we pick up a premium. Pocket Kings on the button. Finally happy to dump money in the middle with and I decide to raise it up to $60. We get the Stridler to make the call. We've been battling against him all night. So heads up to a flop of Queen Jack 8-2 clubs. He checks and this is just like an interesting board because we don't really want to dump a bunch of money in here. So I start off with a bet of $40 and for 40, he calls. The turn comes the six of diamonds, pretty much a brick. I bet out 110 now, sizing up a little bit and for 110, he calls. The river is a really interesting one in the 10 of clubs. Interesting as in one of the worst cards that I didn't want to see. It completes a lot of two pair combos, the flush draw, some straights get there, just a whole bunch of things that beat one pair. But he checks for a third time and I think in my head it seems super nitty to check back pocket kings. So instead we opt for a different route. Deciding to bet small and experiment with a one fifth bet pot about $60, and I think this bet can accomplish a few things. Could potentially induce a raise as a bluff, you know, thinking that this $60 bet is super weak, which honestly it is, or it could induce a raise for value, then we can easily fold. Or the third thing is we can get him to call with a one pair holding, like Queen X that's just trying to close his eyes and hope he's good. Ultimately facing this bet, he says he's confused and ends up just folding, which I'm totally okay with. Happy to try to go for a small bet for value. It was pretty clear that our hand was good the whole time. And there it is. That's how we bet out $60 and scare away a one pair holding. For the last interesting hand of the night, we pick up another premium in Ace King Offsuit. We're on the big blind and action folds to me. Playing into straddle now, I raise it up to $70 and he makes the call. So heads up out of position, the flop comes 754 two clubs and a spade. Here with the flush blockers, I decide to bet large $110. I don't know if this is a mistake, but in the moment I went for 110. He makes the call though, so gonna need to improve. The turn now is the ace of spades. Wow, a whole lot on the board now. A ton of straight draw possibilities, a ton of flush draw possibilities, and we have top top somehow. 
With a nut flush blocker, I think we're going to check this one. Not really sure. Someone in the comments, I'm sure you guys can just, you know, roast me because I think this is wrong. Anyways, he bets out $240 and obviously we're just not going to be folding. I decide on making the call and see what develops on the river. The river is now another interesting card in the three of clubs. So every single draw imaginable gets there, the flush, the straight. I check it over to him and he thinks about it for a while and actually ends up checking back. He shows us the 6-4 of spades, 4 to the straight, so pretty sick flop for the both of us. Pretty sick turn as well as he had a pair, straight draw, and flush draw. Anyways, the straight is just going to be good enough to win for sure. He ended up saying he checked because he was afraid that I'd turn like, the nut flush blocker into a bluff, which I certainly was thinking and hoping to do. But we lose and didn't have a chance to try to bluff him off. So, unfortunately, we couldn't get the job done today. Losing session, didn't really get a whole lot going. Had some strong hands, ran into stronger hands. Something about not wearing a luck box hoodie, who knows? Can't win a session unless I wear the luck box uh, hoodie or t-shirt. So, if you want to grab one and have some winning sessions, link in the description. Big shout out to Jamie for making all of them. It's uh, cart.silverscreendesign.com slash rampagebroker. Um, music here is unfortunately very loud, which is not great for the vlog. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Um, we were in for 10, out for 87.15, so a bit of an L there, and there's so much music. I'm walking close to the music. That's not a smart idea for the vlog. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to end this before I get copyright striked, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.